There's always got to be a lot of behind the scenes making this happen. But the first and foremost thing I want to do tonight is to introduce you to our Australian brother, Kim Farnick, who's joining us from Adelaide. And uh, the reason he's doing that is because, uh, well, he was just sharing before you all came into the room, Kim uh, made a passing remark that uh, he spent more than 400 hours hosting prayer meetings on Zoom. So, so, so this man is a seasoned prayer, and uh, he will encourage us tonight with some of what uh, the Lord has been teaching him, and he's been passing on to his friends in the Australian Prayer Networks. And not only will we get something from God's Word, I imagine we're going to get some wonderful uh, testimony, answers to prayer, uh, that has been achieved in not only South Australia, but the nation of Australia. Different things we do. And uh, so coming from that place and have been running uh, online prayer in Australia, uh, this last run particularly started January of 19. Um, a lot of people have been Zooming before that, but we came together and felt that there was a need to have a national initiative around the election. And then Pastor Margaret Court um, called 21 days of prayer and fasting before the election. We'd already started the prayer. So we were only doing a couple of nights a week. We ramped that up to every night, prayed through the election, and we had an amazing election uh, outcome. Now, tonight I'm going to talk about identificational repentance and um, standing in the gap. That was my theme, but I'm actually going to tell it by telling testimony. But it was basically a bunch of intercessors crying out to God to move in our nation and repenting for abortion and other sins of this nation, which are grievous. And you have the same problem that we do. And uh, calling God to move in our nation. And of course, Scott Morrison got reelected uh, unexpectedly and went against the tide. And that was a good thing. Uh, he's a godly man. Um, we then prayed through the year. We, on and off, we'd run different nights. Uh, we had different bursts, like October of 19, we went for a whole month, uh, praying for the, uh, at that time we had a serious drought and rains came and God answered prayer. Again, people weeping for God, crying out for their nation, repenting for the sins of the nation and God moved. Uh, fast forward to January and again, we, we bump into the bushfire situation and just after Christmas, the Bureau of Meteorology had a long-term quarterly forecast. No significant rain in Australia anywhere until April or May. And then two weeks into praying, rains came all over the nation and the fires were out. You caught the tail end of our fires, I believe. The smoke made it all the way over to where you guys are, which was, um, apologies for that. Um, and uh, anyway, so the... Um, uh, so that's what's been going on. So yeah, so prayer works. And then of course, um, we continue to pray and we, we, uh, we had bursts of uh, various prayer where we'd pray uh, longer hours and um, we would move forward in that, in that form. Uh, then of course, COVID came this year. And uh, what happened was Wayne Alcorn, who was the president of the Australian Christian Churches, which is formerly the Assemblies of God, called within their denomination a month of prayer from the 19th of March to the 19th of April at 1900 hours that everyone should pray. And we picked up on that and um, spoke with uh, Warwick and myself felt we should pick that up and run with that. And we did our normal 20 hundred hours, but with daylight saving in Queensland and them not having it, it ended up being 1900 hours up there. So we prayed through that, uh, that first month and that ended up, running through, we didn't stop with then the Global Day of Outreach, which was the May 2020 Go 20, uh, Go2020.World Outreach were part of that. We decided to back that in and it kept flowing on and on and on. And we ended up doing 75 nights in a row right through to the day after Pentecost. And we've dialed back to three nights, um, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday at the moment. So that's sort of what's happening in Australia at the moment. I want to start off by saying, I, what I want to encourage you is what God does when we pray. And I'm just going to go to share screen here. And I know I'm going to go late tonight, so I apologize right off. So this graph that you're seeing at the moment was the first wave of COVID we had here in Australia. And of course, it's accelerating up to this point three, which is it peaked at over 450 new cases in a day 
of Saturday the 28th of March. And the trajectory was not good. And uh, one of our spiritual daughters is a doctor uh, in Victoria. And, uh, you know, there's a, got a lot of good information from her. But that was the, that graph, by the way, is from the uh, D Department of Health here in Australia. So Saturday the 28th of March is that peak day. Then, uh, so the trend line is up. And then after that, it trend line crashes down and we went, you know, almost like you guys are virtually zero for a while until this recent second wave in Victoria, which is localized to Melbourne, I might add. Um, what happened? Well, we we're in the middle of our prayer. We had a prophetic word that we administered. And by that, I mean, prayed it through and, and, and called it out, which is this would pass by Passover. Uh, Passover being the 18th to 16th, 8th to the 16th of April. But Sunday the 29th, that morning, we had over a thousand people online praying and we'd run, we were running a 25 hour round the clock prayer that weekend. And from the Saturday night to the Sunday night, from 8 p.m. Saturday to 9 p.m. Sunday, I'm quoting Sydney times, so not that it really matters. But the important thing was Scott Morrison, our prime minister came on and prayed. And he was with his family, the Christian family. And he was open and repentant and crying out to God. And it moved our hearts to have a prime minister that could pray, that knew how to pray, that prays every day and prayed with all of the intercessors online. And uh, we didn't intend to publish it, but people recorded it and it ended up going viral across the nation. Most of it was positive. It was a bit of left-wing anti prime minister but not much most people have said well he says he's a christian and he's praying for the nation good on him which is the the outcome of that uh but prayer changes things the day that we had the prime that weekend we prayed it, the the numbers peaked and then they crashed you can't um you can't make that happen so that's just one case where god's moved we had the rains in october we had the the uh, the bushfires dealt with in january um, this second wave we had eight, seven hours, sorry, six hours last Sunday week ago, and it hasn't, um, it hasn't crashed in the same way. We we're expecting it to, but there's also a lot going on in the state of Victoria, um, with their, pri their premier. We, we have states you don't obviously, um, unless you count the two islands, I don't know. Um, but we, there's, there's a lot, there's a spiritual battle going on in Australia over Victoria at the moment. But Victoria uh, have a, a very left negative anti-God agenda. And uh, I know God's dealing in that. Um, I do not believe in the judgment of God in these things. I do not believe COVID is judgment. But I do recognize, if we look at Deuteronomy, if you obey God, you're blessed. And if you disobey, you're not. You come into curse. And we reap what we sow. And it's God's grace that actually brings the blessing. And as we come into his presence, we can bring blessing. Uh, but in that, we are definitely calling forth uh, repentance, uh, number one, and renewal and revival and God's grace and salvation for our nation. And we also pray significantly into this region. Uh, particularly, uh, we pray into New Zealand and all of the islands, Papua New Guinea, um, Solomon's, Vanuatu, and so forth, and uh, really stand with the region, the whole South Pacific region. And I believe both New Zealand and Australia are the senior partners, if you will, within the region and have a, a prayer responsibility. And I know many of you are a part of that. So I honor that and thank you for that. As uh, mentioned before, the background I'm carrying on my Zoom is a photo I took in Besheva, Israel, 31st of October, uh, 2017, being the 100th anniversary of, of the Australian light horse charge on Besheva, which could not have happened without New Zealand, the New Zealand uh, light horse and, and so forth, taking out the Turkish, three entrenched Turkish machine gun, gun companies on our right flank who were dug in on a hill known as Tel Al Sabr at the time, which has been renamed to Tel Beersheba now, which is the ancient city of Beersheba. 
interestingly, that's where the wells of Abraham are. I say are because they've been redug. The original well, the Israeli government have refurbished and redug Abraham's well. The prophets can put that one in their back pocket, read into that what you will, and there's a lot to read into it. Um, so there's all of these things happening. But the bottom line is prayer changes things. It changes governments. It changes the weather. It changes the hearts of people. It enables the Holy Spirit to convict of sin. And God doesn't need us to do anything. He's totally sovereign and in control. control. But he wants to use us to be partners in doing things. And an extreme illustration of us interceding and partnering of God is this. The, uh, the local... Um, YWAM base leader has a, a two-year-old daughter and she's a bit older now but uh, there's a little video of her sitting next to her dad and they're playing video games she's got a video game controller and her thumbs going and dad's playing the video game she's playing the video game with dad and she's having a wow of a time with her dad the problem is her controller is not actually plugged in dad's doing it all and sometimes I think we need to recognize how much God's on our side and we're playing along with him as it were in the best sense of that. And that's what intercession to me ultimately is about knowing the father's heart, sensing where he's at, praying his heart into situations, which is first and foremost salvation, but also the healing of the land, healing of the nations, healing of relationships. Son, last night uh, I had a very heavy uh, session uh, with our group um, here in Australia, our regular Sunday night, we normally pray for the nations and we did, but we prayed into a particular topic and I had to take 125 intercessors on a bit of a journey. And the topic was quite simply people trafficking and particularly child sex trade, which accounts for about 8 million children a year. And through the work we do with Rahab, which is why I mentioned that, I'm acutely aware of how much of that's even happening in Australia. And I know in New Zealand and, and across the nations in this region. And if that doesn't break your heart, nothing will. But we went through an intercession. We took that on. We repented. We called forth healing, uh, spoke, declared against porn and all sorts of things, and went through the whole intercessory process last night with great effect, I believe but also recognizing that ultimately in intercessory prayer, we don't take it on ourselves because it's already been taken on the cross. We're simply standing in the gap with the Lord uh, to call forth, you know, healing and salvation and um, that, that we're proclaiming uh, freedom to captives. And they're setting people free when we pray and we make a difference and something shifted in the heavenlies through our prayer last night, not through Kim, and not through any one person on the call. And there's a few of our regulars on here. I recognize a few names around that are fantastic prayer warriors, but it's not up to any one of us or even if us as a group, but us together with the Lord make a difference. Us together with the Lord is a total majority. In fact, the Lord's a majority by himself, obviously, but he calls us to be part of that. And so you have your election coming up and New Zealand has got a, uh, a slew of uh, moral issues, just as Australia does. Uh, abortion, euthanasia, prostitution, all of these things. Um, you know, and, and there's been nuances of corruption and things in your government, you know, and I'm not at all critical because ours is worse. Um, the only thing we have going for us at the moment is that we have an amazing prime minister um, who I've actually had some time to talk to and, uh, heard him pray and uh he's been criticized for that but man i'd rather have that in fact it's, it's it's joyous to have him and we uplift him and we're gonna we'll have an election in another year and a half um pray for us in that regard but we're praying for you and your election and i'll finish with this thought and i have gone long that when you're praying for leaders in a representative democracy we're a constitutional monarchy with a representative democracy. That's our form of government. Unlike the early Christians who had an emperor, a dictatorial emperor in Rome, we don't. We elect people to represent us. And via elections, via royal commissions, 
via petition, via lobbying. There are mechanisms where we can call politicians to account and that's right to do so. They work for us, not the other way around. The government, the public sector work for you, the citizen voting taxpayer and prayer, and they are accountable to you. And therefore we have a right in the spirit to call judgment. Now in the West, and I need to qualify the word judgment there, judgment is seen as punitive, but in God, it's redemptive. I welcome God's judgment because it brings me closer to him. And it's in that light that I speak judgment. But if people will not repent, it's also us right to ask God to remove them. So I'm not going to go into the politics of New Zealand because we ultimately look at um, Joshua 5 and the, and the Lord appeared to him, the angel of the Lord, the captain of the Lord's host. Are you for me or for my enemies? And he said, I am the captain of the Lord's host. Reworded, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Are you on my side? And are we on God's side? So regardless of how you particularly vote, the issue is, are you praying and calling forth God's agenda for New Zealand? Is God's agenda number one for New Zealand? And what's God's agenda for New Zealand? Salvation, deliverance, provision, healing, and, a, and above all, family and being in the family of God. And we stand with you in that. And that's, that's as far as I'll go tonight. I could unpack a whole lot of theology, but I won't. But wanted to get this idea over that you make a difference. Every single one of you that pray make a huge difference. And I honor you and thank you for New Zealand that you're our Anzac brothers and sisters and stand together with you. We love you. We support you. And we pray for you regularly. And um, other things happen, other interactions, but it's all good. And that you are a value and God values your prayers and your tears and you are changing your nation and the region. I honor you for that in Jesus name. Thank you.